Radio Shouty. A lot of people also kind of think that, you know, Dayton family, that you were exactly, uh, that you were with Dayton family. But I argue and I tell people all the time, I say, yeah, Jake Deflake was instrumental in Dayton family. But Jake Deflake was his own artist. Now, I want you to tell me a little bit about um, that FBI album. Um, were, you on, were you on, you know, uh, songs on that album with FBI and a lot of the, you know, uh, hand rock, all that, all that, all that uh, you know, great music that they put out? And what happened with that record? Because I remember back in the day, um, you know, you know, when, you know, I'll see you a few different times. And I know that you, the original album, you was on pretty much every single thing. Take us through, you know, that album and kind of what happened with that. Okay, so what happened with FBI once 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 they first album What's on Your Mind blew up, that blew up independently. It first just came out as they just put it out into they, they this is what made me want to rap. This is the whole thing I mean, I was already rapping. Me and Shoestring was in talent shows in junior high against each other. We was always best friends in competition to one another with girls, with rapping, with basketball, football. Everything, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, 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 what we did was when uh, Bahim was always rapping and was going to the studio when we was in the see when we was in the going in the eighth 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 grade, going in the ninth grade. I think Shoestring was, you know, definitely in the ninth grade. He was already in the studio when niggas wouldn't even go. He already was going in the studio making songs, right? His own songs as a solo artist. Okay. So, and at that time, that's when I had, you know, we went, to, we went to the same junior high school, but I went to a different high school. We went to junior high school together, we went to a different high school. So he kept on, you know, doing what he was doing and kept with the rap. And me, I started selling dope that summer of the eighth grade going to the ninth grade. Okay. So by the time we in high school, I'm, I'm selling good dope, got a Cadillac, but I used to see him, he'd be walking down the street and he'd jump in the car with me. I got the 415s in the back and the trunk, I'm <laughs> selling good dope, right? So he'd right. jump in the car. He'd say, I just left the studio. He'd throw his tape in, you know what I'm saying? And we'd ride and bump that boy, you know what I'm saying, for a minute, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. what happened was um, Bootleg, which is Ira Dorsey, he was always one of the hottest niggas from, from our hood that was rapping, but he was just a nigga that moved on his own. He used to hang with some other G niggas, you know what I'm saying? But we was all kind of from the same, you know, areas, but just wasn't all together. But he used to all, but he was always one of the best known lyricists in the town, so uh, they end up, you know, uh, battling each other. They got together for a battle, but when they got together for for the battle, Shoestring broke, had his, his, he had his motherfucker, he had his radio, you know, like back in the day, they got their radio. Mm -hmm. He got his radio when they finna battle, he play his songs and push play and play his music from in the studio. So Bootleg was always a freestyle and rapping nigga that had songs, but he had never been to the studio. So when he seen the Shoestring had that, that blew his mind. Right. So okay. in, in, in the process of them battling, they end up getting together and then becoming the group. You know what oh. I'm saying? So uh, uh, then, they, and then the big dope, you know, one of the dope boys, the big dope dudes in the town at that time, Matt Hinkle, he ended up getting by. They got with him. He got behind him and put the money behind him. And the rest is history. So once they, what's on your mind album, so they put it out independently. So when they put that out independently, I seen how many, it was only cassettes back then, no CDs, just cassettes. Mm -hmm. Man, they was selling out of every store from Flint to Saginaw every day. Man, they was making five dollars. They had an EP. They was making them five dollars. Man, they was selling so many cassettes. Everybody riding down the street, everywhere in the city was playing. You couldn't go nowhere and didn't hear Dayton Family Music. Right. So, so once I seen them, once I seen them uh making the money off of the cassettes, you know me, I clicked in my brain. I'm like, shit, that, that's five dollars, <laughs> five dollars, yes, and two dollars. At twenty five, five thousand and five is five cassettes. That's twenty five thousand. I can get me a brick. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, right hand to God, bro. Right hand to God. That's what I was thinking. I said, I'm gonna give me five thousand cassettes. I'm gonna sell and boom all of them. I'm gonna get shoe string. I know I'm gonna get heen on it. If I get bootleg on one, but I know I'm gonna get string on one. Then I'm gonna make my own shit. I'm gonna get back in the game. Start back rapping, fuck this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give me, pay me twenty five thousand on these cassettes. Then I'm gonna buy me a brick, and I'm gonna be straight in the game. Breeze, <laughs> <laughs> talk to, us, talk to us. So, so, so we, 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 okay, we, we got you right now. You know what I'm saying with the bricks and stuff. Tell me a little bit about that FBI album, how that okay. came to be, and you was, you were on that album. Take me through that whole journey of, of, you know, how that came to be and what happened with that whole situation. Okay, so so once the once the Dayton family had blew up and they was the hottest thing in the town, 
bootleg, you know, he used to be doing a lot of blow. So, and then, and then he was on probation a lot of times. So he will be not going to drop everybody. He was the hottest thing in the town. He had the rooms, the probation officer looking for him. People can't find him. Long story short, bootleg goes to jail. Oh. When they, when, when and, and, but they hot as a firecracker. And so okay. now, and now they didn't, this when they had got, they, they was already signed to relativity. Okay. This fast forward to where they went from independently out the trunk to getting with a distributor, E40 Uncle in California. Then from there, they sold like 60,000 with him. That made Relativity notice him. Then they got with Relativity. Relativity re released the album and put it all across the world. It went big again. And so now it was time for a brand new album. Everybody in the world had heard about them. They liked them. Time for a new album. Boom. Bootleg in jail. Wow. And, and, and the nigga who put the money behind them had got indicted, Matt Hinkle had went to jail, but he had one of his other, some of his other homies that was getting money on the low key that had moved to Atlanta that was kind of business. So that's who got them with E-40 Uncle over in California independently, but the label was called Pope Grove Records. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Big Ken and them, and uh, Tony, you know, some real niggas though, some real, some real, real style niggas like the other nigga was, you know what I'm saying? But they just had a real solid crew. So they end up moving to the A by the time they, they had a, they moved they label to Atlanta. Mm. So uh, now they got the money from Relativity. They Relativity waiting on their next album. So Shoestring always was the one back then that was, Ira was always out bullshit. So Shoestring would be out. He would always be the one that would come up with the beats. Then he'll go in there and drop his verse. This most of the time, you know, ninety percent okay. of the time, I say that he came right. up with all the beats and concepts. And then he'll go in there and drop his verse. So now all he got to do is go find wherever the fuck I report bootleg party in that <laughs> <laughs> and force that nigga into the studio. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so, so when so when he will find uh so but but bootleg was in jail, but relativity waiting on the album, but the label didn't tell Paul Broke didn't tell relativity that bootleg was in jail because they was ready to get that big chunk of money that they was promised. Wow. So 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 what happened was. They, they got with Shoestring to get with me to come and do the album. So I, I was going to the studio. It was a good opportunity for me because I was, like you said, I was always solo. I featured on, we did songs together, like you say, Going Way Out is me and Shoestring. So right. we always had good combos that people love. So, and me and him, best friends from growing up. So for, but for me to do it with Ira not being there, it was just an opportunity for me. I wasn't trying to replace Ira and, and Stream wasn't trying to replace me for Ira because at that time, I was nowhere near the artist or the rapper that Ira was to me anyway. Okay. He was okay. always a bad motherfucker. I can always, I say it to this day. But anyway, uh, but they had to get the money. So Shoestring came and got me. I went to the studio and, was, and I was on every single song on FBI oh. album, but it wasn't released yet. So what happened was in, in, the, in that process of completing the album, Shoestring got him a manager, a nigga named Bobby Russell. I called him Bobby Hustle. So what Bobby Hustle went and did, long story short, he went and snitched to Relativity and told them that, man, they don't, man, they doing it with another dude, he ain't the actual member, and bootleg is in jail, and they can't give you the Dayton Family album because the other original rapper is locked up. So when, so, so, when, so when Relativity got that information, they were so powerful back then, I don't know what the hell they did, but all I know is, man, shit. Bootleg was out of jail and in the studio finishing that damn <laughs> album up. What? I don't know who went and got a nigga out of prison. He wasn't just an account. This nigga was in prison. Wow. They went and got this nigga out of prison and took him to the studio. And he went to the studio and finished the whole album up. Then he went back to prison to serve the rest of his time. <laughs> what? Damn. That's what Relativity Damn. did. And so when, when that happened, that knocked me off of all of the songs that I was originally on. It was cool, though, because, like I said, I was just taking the place. I wasn't tripping, you know, just an opportunity, but when it wasn't there no more, it was cool. But then I, I still was on the song called With Your Eyes Closed on that. You'll be like, you'll be I love that your song. Eyes I love that yeah, so I was, I, was, I, was, I, I had a verse on that one. I had a verse on that song. But as far as the whole album, the, all of the songs that I was on was never released. Because Bootleg, they got Bootleg ass out of jail. And then that nigga came and dropped, dropped, that, dropped, that, dropped his verses on that shit. And it's, it's history to this day, you know what I'm saying? A classic album.